What's up YouTube, it's Artisan MC, and today I'm just going to give my quick reaction to The Old Guard on Netflix. Now, I heard about this movie a couple of weeks back, saw a trailer for it, and it piqued my interest. Um, immortals and people who live forever and people with abilities are always on my radar when it comes to movies. This is one of the playgrounds I like to play in because I think there's a lot of interesting dynamics and a lot of human stories that can come out of stories that deal with immortals or people who live forever. And I was not disappointed with the old guard. Now, I didn't read the comic. The comic was written in 2017 by Greg Rucka. And amazingly enough, I've met Greg Rucka before. I met him at a convention while I was working there. And he seems like a pretty decent dude. Just from my, you know, short, short meeting with him. But this story, I remember when this book came out and I didn't really read it. And I remember what caught my eye about it was the symbol, the double-bladed axe symbol. It looked pretty cool, it was catchy. And when you do comics, that's something you want. You want something iconic that people actually remember. But I never read the comic. Now, seeing the show come out, I didn't even associate it right away with the comic book. It just sound like a very interesting concept. I like um, Charlize Theron. She's a she's a decent actor, and I know she's been stepping up her game and doing a lot more action movies and doing her action. Okay, not that big of a deal. Um, Chidwick, I'm saying his name wrong. I don't know it. Chidwick Ejiofor, like him, loved him in every movie that I've seen of him so far. So I was already kind of bought into this movie. And when I saw the rest of the trailer and got that they were kind of immortal and they're a small unit that has been together for centuries, I was curious because usually in Hollywood, if you talk about somebody being an immortal, it's only one or two ways that they go, and the primary way is that they're freaking vampires. It's just the way it goes. The other way would be in the Highlander sense, where they just live forever and you got some backstory that might not make some sense. So I was curious to see it. And it came out yesterday or today, Friday midnight, um, July 10th on Netflix. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Now, I won't do a full review of this. I'll probably do the full review right after I finish this reaction because I just want the reaction to be short and get it out there and let people know. Yes, I have seen it. I did enjoy it. There were some things I didn't like about it that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And I want to be able to match it up with the comic when I do a full review of it. But for the most part, you get the story of Charlize Theron, her character being Andy. And Andy is an immortal. That's not giving anything away. You can see that in any freaking trailer. Andy is an immortal and she runs a team of immortals. Herself and three other guys. And they've all been living for a long time and doing missions and trying to help the world in their own way um, for a long time. And on this last mission, something gets screwed up. They're baited to a spot, they're taken out, and they're caught on video regenerating coming back to life, and now it's known that someone, Jerry Gisha Force character, knows that they are immortals and has evidence that they are immortal. And now the hunt is actually on to find them and find Jerry Gisha Force character, which is uh, Mr. Copley, to find him and find out why he set them up and what was the whole point of this. The other line that you have in this story is the character of Niall Freeman, played by Kiki Lane. Now, I haven't, I've seen Kiki Lane in something, and I can't think of what it is right now off the top of my head because I'm doing this right after watching the movie, but it's not coming to me yet. By the time I do the full review, I'm sure it'll come to me. But she's a Marine in Afghanistan, and on the course of one of their missions in Afghanistan, you know, the house looking for someone. 
she ends up getting killed. And it ends up being discovered that she cannot die. She dies for the first time. She wakes up in a medevac. Freaked out, freaking other people out. And the interesting part of how these immortals are connected and how they find each other is that they feel it when a new one comes online, so to speak. They feel it. They feel each other. And they're drawn to each other. Which is a good point. Being that you have people who are supposed to do some good in the world, they need to be drawn together some kind of way. Some kind of way they have to be able to find each other. Or locate each other. Otherwise it will just be, you know, random chaos of them doing stuff on different sides of the globe and never knowing about each other. It helps if they find each other. They can be a force there. So this is what happens in this situation with Niall and Andy and his team all have visions of her. She has visions, and Niall has visions of them. And inexplicably they are drawn together. Andy seeks out Niall and they're drawn together and starts filling her into this world. Now, obviously the fighting scenes are good. The fighting scenes are good. You can see that these actors put in their time with the stunt coordinators, with the tactical teams, with the weapon handling team. They put in their work, they put in their time. They are they are really smooth and they are really crisp. Okay, I like that part. I get into the technical aspect of people, you know, using weapons and using their skills, their skills and using fighting skills. I get into that. I really watch that closely. The other part of it is. The music. The music is alright, but they did a six underground set of music where it fits but only slightly. It fits in like you're trying to grab a younger audience, but it doesn't fit for these characters being old. I would have expected a movie about older immortals being attached to some older music. Just what it is, something classical, something, you know, orchestral, something. Um, the locations, I like the locations that were some out of the way spots and it looked like they spent a lot of time filming overseas, which is which is fine. And I like the way the story developed to where it didn't give you everything about them right up front, but it unfolded in the course of the story. You didn't have to go back and get an origin. It just unfolded during the story in natural exposition conversation. For me, that's all I like a story. You don't need to tell me the background in front. Fill it in as you go and just move me along with the story. So, um, it was entertaining. Some of the people, some of the actors in it, the main villain, he's, he's, look, he's an ugly motherfucker. He's an ugly dude to look at. I'm sorry. <laughs> he is like an awkward dude to look at. But, the movie moves it along and it's interesting and I would watch it again I'll probably watch it again tonight later on but it's worth a watch it's worth a watch it was it was entertaining like I said I'll do my research and find me a copy of the comic to see how closely it paralleled the comic because there's some things I want to work out that I had problems with that don't seem like they would have fit in the comic but I'll find it so that's it Old Guard on Newflix, worth a watch if you weren't going to watch it, check it out, and we can talk about it later. So, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.